In this screencast we're going to be looking at kernel maps. Now these offer a different way of simplifying Boolean expressions and they're basically an alternative form of representing a truth table. So instead of having a truth table with two to the n rows, so for example we had three inputs, we have two to the three or eight uh, different rows in the truth table. With a kernel map it's actually a two-dimensional grid with uh, two to the n cells. So in the case of three inputs, it would be a, a two-dimensional grid or map with eight different cells. Now each cell in the kernel map represents a possible min term, just as a um, row in a truth table represents a min term. So it's the same for kernel map, but just now we're doing it in cells rather than rows. And the same with the truth table, we just we put ones in the um, output column to specify the Boolean expression we just, with a kernel map, we just put a one in the relevant cell to specify the Boolean expression. And uh, the fact that it's in this map, it makes it, um, you know, the map designed in such a way that it makes it quite straightforward to visually spot patterns to help simplify the expression. So we're going to be focusing on three input um, fun uh, expressions with three inputs or three variables. And these are plotted on the three input uh, kernel map. So with three inputs or three variables, we'll have uh, eight different cells. So these are represented, as we can see here, in this two by four um, grid. So the A and B inputs represent the four different rows. So we've got our, our four different rows, each represented by um, the possible combinations of the A and B in, uh, variables and then the two columns uh, represent the two possible values for the uh, C variable here. So it's very very important to note that the row numbering follows grey code so we can see this is not normal binary so we know normal binary 00011011 well um, with a kernel map it's important to use grey code so this um, we can see the grey code here. Now this, using grey code ensures that only one bit changes on each row. So we can see, if we, if we go from 0, 0 to 0, 1, this bit changes. But then with the normal binary code, as we go from 1 to 2, both bits change. So um, with um, grey code, only one bit changes at a time, so we can see this bit changes, then this bit changes, and then this bit changes. So it's very, very important to remember to number the rows using grey code just to ensure that the cells are only ever different by uh, one bit. So this is the truth table, you know, the, um, each each cell here represents a different row, so it's just like reading off a map. You've got the kind of map coordinates, normally uh, letters and numbers. So we can see here this. So this is our A and B values in the different cells. And then depending which column it is, we obviously just use the relevant value of C. So there are eight possible uh, binary values. And we can also just write in the min terms. So we can see for the case where, obviously, in this top left cell, when it's zero, 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 all the variables here are complemented. So that's not A and not B and C. And obviously for the case where we've got one, 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 the actual min term, what's in that cell is A, B, C. So it's just, if it's a one, we have the variable itself and if it's a zero we have the complement of the variable. So as I said before it's very important to use grey code to make sure that each cell is different to the its neighbour by only one variable. So this is called adjacency so the adjacent cells are only different by one variable. So we can see um, for example these two cells they're only different by this one bit and then for example these two you can see the um, it's the last bit there what's different when we do this it actually means that the table 
kind of wraps around so we have this wrap around adjacency because we can see this cell so zero 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 is actually different from this only by one bit so we, because we're, because this cell and this cell only differ by one bit we can say that they're adjacent so this one's actually next to this one and this and the same with this case these cells are only different by one bit so they're adjacent so you can kind of imagine the kernel map folding back on itself so it would kind of look something along those lines if you kind of ima imagine what I'm saying so it can kind of fold this back on itself and it also folds the other way like a tube because if we look here this these cells are obviously these cells are next to each other kind of this way but imagine if you kind of curl it back on itself they're also next to each other this way so cells we could say cells are adjacent if they only differ by one bit so that's why it's very important to use gray code for the numbering so we'll look at an example now this is a, um, a three input uh, expression we can see here so we know when we've got the normal truth table we've got our eight, eight possible input combinations and we've just got our eight put values and we make the SOP expression or the sum of products expression by summing the min terms for which eight put is one. So when the eight put is one, we just sum those and we get this SOP expression. Now you could use you know you can use Boolean algebra to simplify this expression, but we're gonna look now how to do it with the kernel map. So the first thing to do is plot the numbers on the kernel map. So we can see every time we've got a one, so zero zero one, that corresponds to this cell, zero zero one. Then then for this next one we look here, that's zero one one. So zero one one will be this cell. And again one zero one one zero oh, so one zero zero, that's that one. And then this one is one zero one, so again one zero and then this one so it's that so it's just a case of looking when the eight put is one and then putting a the one in the relevant cell in the re relevant kind of map coordinate if you will so now we've got our kernel map so this these two just represent the same functions there's different forms of representing that um, boolean expression now, to go back simplifying it, the first step is to try, we need to group ones together, basically. So, ones that are in adjacent cells, we try and group together. So, the groups have got to be in powers of two. So, two, four, eight, eight well, actually one. So, one, two, four, eight. So, you, if you group the ones, so imagine that, so if you, if you grouped all the ones like this, you have just made, in this case, five different groups we will just get our full SOP expression. What we've seen here, this is a one, two, three, four, five different terms. So if we did it that way, we'll just get the full SOP expression. So that's no good, we've not simplified it. So that's the idea is to make the groups to be as big as possible. Because each group represents a term in the simplified expression. So we want as few terms as possible, so as few as groups as possible. So because we use a kernel map, it's very easy very easy to kind of spot these groups because we can see trivially here so we know we can make groups of two four and eight so i can just make a big group here of those ones and i can make this one here so that's you know that might that that seems fairly obvious so there we've instead of using five groups we've actually dropped it down to two groups so we can see we've simplified it um quite a bit already but you can actually reuse ones in multiple groups because the bigger the group, the more terms you're going to um, cancel out of your expression. So in this case, it's actually better to make this group here and then use this group here. So now I've still got two groups, but now one group is size two and the other one is size four. So the next, now we've identified our groups. Um, we need to um, come up with an expression for each group. And we do that by, we basically keep the variables that remain constant in the group and eliminate or cancel out the ones that appear both 
as a zero and one. So in this, so in the red group here, we can see C is a um, constant. You know, in this entire group, C is obviously always one. And then for the other ones, A appears as a zero and a one, and then B appears as a zero one. So we can actually cancel those out. So if they, if um, a variable appears as both a zero and one, we can cancel it. And it's only if a variable is constant in the entire group that we uh, that we keep that variable. So we can see this group of four just gives us because C is a one here. We just say that's that's equal to C. So that group, the expression what defines that group is just C. So we've cancelled out because we made a big group there. So we can um, so we can in this case if you have a group of one, so the size one. You would actually have all three variables. So that's the min term. That would that would that group would contain a, b, and c. You have a group size of two. You get um, two variables. You basically cancel one out. And a group size of four. So it depends on one variable. What's c here? And in, in this case, if you make a group of eight, if they're all ones, the expression the, the expression is just equal to one. So, with a group of eight, it just equals uh, equals one. The eight. So we'll look at the second group now. So we've got this blue group here. So we can see C. So in this in this blue group, C is both zero and one. So that gets eliminated. And we can't really simplify when you've got a row like this. A and B are constant. So A is all is always one in that group and b is always zero so that gives us uh, a and not b so that the expression for that group is just a and not b and it's just a case of uh, summing those together so that the sum simplified expression for that will just be c or a not b and we can just make the circuit for that so from a fairly comp you know it looks from a fairly complicated Sum of products expression here, using a kernel map, it's very easy to, to kind of identify these groups, come up with the expression for the group, and get um, get the simplified expression. So just you know, the key really is just spotting those groups and making them as big as possible, reusing ones like we did in this case, so we can re reuse this one here, so ones can appear in more than one group. And it's just not imagine you've got an example for where these two cells for zero, for example. You can make this group of two here, but remember because of this wraparound adjacency, you can actually make a group here. So that those cells are actually still next to each other. If you imagine the map folding back on itself. So in that case we can see so, so for this for this group here, C we can see C is constant and equal to 1, so we've got C, and then A is a 0 and a 1 for those rows, so A is eliminated because it, it's got its, uh, it appears as a 0 and 1, and we just keep B, so B is 0 for both, so that'll be not B and C. So it's a case of you know using this wraparound adjacent, say reusing ones in multiple groups as you can do, and just make the groups as big as possible. Because you could make a group like this, but we can see then that's three. That will give you three terms in your expression. So once there's fewer groups to give us as few terms as possible in the expression. So we end up with this simplified value very easily just by uh, visually looking at this kernel map. So we'll look how to do it using Boolean algebra because it's much harder doing it this way. So basically the tip for doing Boolean algebra is to look for common factors that appear in multiple terms. So here we've got five different min terms in this expression. You want to be looking for common factors that appear in multiple terms along with the complemented un and uncomplemented variables. So I'd, so I'd start off looking at this, looking at these first two terms and you can see the We've got in both both terms has got not, not a and c, so we can take that out as a and they've also and then this group's got not b and this one's got b, so we can take not a and c outside, 
and it'll give us this expression and within all this is going to cancel to one to give us not a and c so we can simply you know that's what we're always doing looking for these common factors and then uh, what appear as complemented uncomplemented variables so we can very easily see how we can simplify these down and then we look at the other three expressions so here I might, might want to say that so I can I can use here I've got a not b a not b so I can use that to eliminate c and then I'm looking at this group here I've got right A, uh, and then uh, I want to start saying now can I simplify this, identify these common factors, and now I can say I've got A here, C here, and I've also got it here and here, but we've ordered, so we can emulate, eliminate B, but we can see then we've had to use this orange term here, we've had to use that twice, you know that's that's useful to simplify this one and this one, and so we know with um, with Boolean algebra like x or uh, if you've got an expression you can just or in extra terms so x or x is just equal to x so you can or in another another term it's not going to affect the overall expression so here because this term looks useful I'm going to use it to simplify this and I'm also going to add in another copy so that now I've got two two of those terms I've just ordered in this extra one it's not broken any rules we can do that without modifying the expression so then now I can identify these common factors and use it to eliminate C and then that will give me this expression and then again I can read now I've I can use this extra term I've ordered in I've got A and C and use it to eliminate B here and then from that expression here we can see um, we've got C as a common factor here and here and it appears of A and not A so we can easily eliminate A to give us this final expression so it is possible to do a Boolean algebra it's just a bit harder and you've got to be able to spot these useful terms but we are in an extra one but you know kernel max makes it much easier to visually see which terms can be useful when we're adding simplification so we can see here in the previous example we ordered in this extra term here and that is actually this one if you look closer that's a so that this cell is 101 or a um, not b and c so that's the term we ordered in we used it twice so we can see we're reusing that one in two groups and it's exactly the same when we're adding an extra one but rather than having to use your kind of experience and building algebra skills to be able to spot that with a kernel map you know, it makes it much easier to spot.